What's up, fellow journeyers? So today's video <laughs> was supposed to go a certain way in my head, but it has since changed. So the original plan, because today's Father's Day, it was gonna be a daddy-daughter hike. So me, Hensley, Stuart, and Audrey, we're gonna take our daughters, we're gonna go on a hike, we're gonna release this video on Father's Day. Lindsay with uh, Living Small Dreaming Big, they're here staying with us. She found out her father passed away at 4 a.m. this morning, and that changed everything. Now he's in Ohio, family is gathering in Florida, so I think she's flying to Florida first, then Ohio. But anyways, Lindsay's flying around. She wanted to take Audrey with her. And so that drastically changed what we're doing. And plus, Stuart's not even here. He's driving them to the airport. And our hearts and prayers are with Lindsay and with their family. We have this booked. We had everything packed. This all happened all at once. We're like, what do we do? So I talked to Hensley, talked to Marissa, talked to Stuart, talked to everybody. And he was like, man, just, just go. And I talked to Hensley. I said, do you still want to go? She said, I want to go. So it evolved that way. And then it continued to evolve because Marissa was like, well, I've always wanted to go to this waterfall. And so now Marissa's going. And so the plan was to leave JJ here with grandma and grandma was gonna take care of JJ while I go, Hensley goes and Marissa go. But then the plan changed again. <laughs> it's a long hike. Are you up for it? Oh my goodness, what are we doing? We just couldn't do it. Hensley was hugging JJ earlier. She was crying. JJ was crying. JJ was like, I want to go to the waterfall. I want to go to the waterfall. So we're apparently going on a nine mile hike, which is pushing it for Hensley anyways, to a waterfall, staying overnight, and then hiking back with a guy who knows very little about backpacking. <laughs> I've only done it twice and I've never done it by myself. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> You already picked out your dinner. I know, we're just having to do impromptu JJ. JJ's a very picky eater. Okay, we're not gonna have a big choice of things to eat, buddy. You just gotta eat what we have when we go backpacking. Lick. Oh, hang Whoa, on. Whoa, what are you doing? He's gonna lick it. <laughs> Wait till I'm done and you. All right, what all we got, bud? We I got, got this. All right. And this. All right, good job. Uh -huh. what, what are these? Tacos. They're your tacos. Okay, you're wearing your tacos. Check. We are <laughs> packed to the top on these. You two ready for an adventure? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I got my stuff. You got Wait, your stuff? Where's my water bottle? Um, I don't know, buddy. Somewhere. Yeah, we're gonna take JJ with us. Uh, why? Because they started crying Aww. and he wants to go, so. We can't do that big high. No, pr uh, we're gonna try. We'll stay with mom. <laughs> My dad's going to go on the high to uh, uh, go to the waterfall. We're sad to run back in and get our toilet paper. <laughs> I don't know if this is TMI, but I was not prepared to be doing a hike today, and I've been doing a cleanse for some health reasons. And now, um, yeah, I was like, oh man, I've got to run in and get toilet paper. sitting on the side of the road randomly somewhere on Marissa's running in the woods. It was very bad timing on the colon cleanse she's doing. So I'm not sure exactly why she volunteered to go on this hike. I can't believe you're filming this. Did it say strenuous? Yes. Yay. <laughs> Don't forget the essentials. <laughs> All right. This is where you hike. Then. This is where you hike? Mm -hmm. All right, let's hike it. Okay. What? Well, this is a little more legit than I think it was. I thought it was, so. I knew it was legit. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the list for like me and you to do, and then somehow it ended up being one kid and then two kids and then. Yeah, we got people back here in the parking lot saying, you guys are brave. <laughs> so, <laughs> I talked to that guy and said, gives caves and copperheads. <laughs> are you being serious? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's poisonous snakes out here. It happens. We'll see what happens. What? That's the one thing I don't do. He said it's okay. They're mainly at night. There's apparently a helicopter pad just on the other side of those trees where we parked because they live fly. They said about 10 people a year. Um, that is not going to be us. Come on, buddy. Nine miles to go. You don't want to step on the roots. Oh. All right. 
You love me. That's when you know JJ is enjoying himself. Anytime he likes something, he'll he'll tell us he loves us. Yeah. He's a uh, pointing out everything, every spider web, every beetle, every tree. I'm doing the same thing, but quiet. Yeah. <laughs> That's the difference in a nine and four. He oh, uh, flowers. I want to go for flowers. You just flip for me. Be okay. We'll be okay. Yeah, we're walking. To the What does it mean to win as a father or win as a dad? Will we actually get to Virgin Falls, which is sort of like the climax of this hiking trail with JJ? Probably not, but that's not the win. Not for this hike. So I think one thing RV living has done for us is help us to live an intentional lifestyle. And so it comes to something like this, I'm thinking, okay, we get to intentionally think about the win, what the whole goal of this is. And really one of the great things about this is we're trying to do things with our kids that we could see ourselves doing with our kids as they get older or as they're adults. So, you know, exploring these national parks and hiking, hoping to build this foundation of things that we can share and enjoy doing together. And hiking like this is one of those things. That's Big Branch Waterfall, Hensley. Here's a waterfall, buddy. Yeah. He's like rushing out of the No internet, no guys. Internet. That's a minipede. So we got two cups. I'll start setting the fire. Here's your fire. Here's your fuel. Here's your pot. Oh, that's cute. Is it a cute pot? <laughs> I've never lit that before. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You're on YouTube. Yeah. Everything on YouTube. Of course I am, yeah. Yeah, I definitely know what I'm doing. Okay, so this is gonna start boiling. Marissa's gonna take over uh, pouring that into the bag. Here's the Cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> and I'm setting up the two tents. I think we'll go right here. This lifestyle, living in an RV, has taught me a lot. We've grown a lot as people. We're not the same people. <laughs> oh, old Marissa would never be doing this. <laughs> I think what, what I've learned mostly is to just get over my fears a lot better. I used to be, and I still am, scared of a lot of things. <laughs> get it, get it, get it. Oh. <laughs> But something I've learned in this lifestyle is the reward of getting over your fears. Man, I love to hike, but I'm so scared of snakes. But what am I gonna do? Am I gonna stay inside and, and never, never experience this because of my fear? When honestly, my number one, my number one dream is being bit by a snake. Number two is getting struck by lightning. But I'm not scared of lightning, but I am so scared of snakes. Does anybody else have dreams about snakes? Am I the only one? And struck by lightning, I don't think I've ever met anybody I've talked to that's had the getting struck by lightning dream, but literally it like jolts me awake. Please tell me I'm not alone. I think just putting yourself in these situations just to grow and overcome your fears has been so rewarding. And seriously, I'm just not the same Marissa anymore. And it's kind of exciting. You gonna climb that? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> Go watch it. You're good, buddy. Good job, buddy. Look at that. Yeah, We got some Grand Canyon going on here. Uh, I know they're horrible. I can't. I'm not showing the other one. I don't know. Should I show it? I can't believe I'm doing this. Close your eyes. If you're queasy, you don't like nasty toes. These have got to be the nastiest toes. Like, they're not gonna be calling me for foot model anytime soon. All right, here's my toes. Ready? 
There they are. <laughs> those are my toes. Just kidding, those are good looking toes. All right, here they go. Ready? I'm gonna scan from uh, best to worst. <laughs> Leave a bunch of comments on what I did wrong in the Grand Canyon to do that to my toes, so. Oh, they're so rough. Did you like it? Did I like what? I love this view. Do you like this view? Uh-huh. What do you think about Daddy? Do you love Daddy? Uh-huh. Yeah? Why do you love Daddy? Because there's pine cones in the trees. You love Daddy because there's pine cones in the trees? Uh-huh. I love you. I love you. But there's pine cones in that tree. <laughs> there pine are pine cones in that tree. It's a true story. I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts on what, what does it mean to be a good dad or not not just like today but the rest of my life being a father not is not that mind. tough like being someone who reproduced a child i don't know something about father and like daddy here and daddy oh, no they won't call me daddy i want to see all the trees you want to see all the trees uh -huh. you love trees possibly more than that. <laughs> but something about being called dad or daddy just feels deeper than being a father i fathered a child i'm that child's dad I think a father keeps his kids safe, provides financially, hopefully teaches them a few things, Whoa. provides discipline, some direction. Did you like what about it? a dad? What does a dad look like? Daddy. Yeah, what's up, buddy? I love you. <laughs> I love you too. When you think of Tennessee, you think of what? A field and a barn. A field and a barn. It's funny, we'll meet people and they'll say, where are you from? And we're like, oh, we're from Tennessee. And they're like, some people that have been to Tennessee, you know, will say, oh, I love Tennessee. Or other people will be like, I've never been there. What's in Tennessee? And it's hard to explain this. I usually say, well, we have a lot of waterfalls, caves, and just like rolling hills but it's like these really unique like layered hills layered mountains like when i think of tennessee like this is my vision this is my picture of home like just something special about it why do you love daddy so much because the park on the tree. no why do you love daddy so much uh because he has a camera because he has a camera <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> if i put the camera down do you still love me yeah. Oh, okay. See, I knew it. Uh, who are you sleeping with? Who, well, we're going to decide when we get back. Who, who are you sleeping, who, who are you sleeping with team? tonight? Uh, with Daddy. Oh, oh why who are you, you sleeping with? with Daddy? Mommy. Mommy, all right. I love you. I love you too. Bye. <laughs> I'll meet up with you guys in a minute. Dads are also too Mommy. stubborn to ask for directions. Mommy. <laughs> hey, show what I got for my girl. She got cold last time in the Grand Canyon. Even this like, is me surviving in the wilderness. This is why I RV can. This is cold. <laughs> and so this is uh, 15 degrees, but apparently the women's sleeping bags, they just go ahead and stuff them a little extra, and it's, so it's technically rated for like zero degrees. The low's 58 tonight. She should be okay. There's no Daddy. way I'm getting cold tonight. There should be no way. I'm probably gonna hear you complain about how hot you are, honestly. But... <laughs> it's really comfortable. <laughs> I have a walking chair. 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 You're lucky it wasn't a rock where your head hit. Come on, get up. Okay. It's not a rocking chair. Okay. There you go, just sit in. Did you have fun sleeping with Daddy? Uh -huh. Yeah. I can get out. JJ. What? <laughs> you cold? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying here, buddy. I'm trying. Got a little colder than anticipated last night, so. How was your zero degree sleeping bag? Did you still get cold? Yeah, there was moments of cold. Even Hensley said, Hensley and I, I don't know. It really was really moist. It was moist. Well, I could, put the, I could put the top on it, that would've kept it warmer. Are you by the fire? If you build it, they will come. Dad's trying to uh, get us to come out by building a fire. <laughs> Both of our kids look <laughs> pretty zonked. <laughs> yeah, we had a a fun long night, huh? Hensley, you gonna make it? Hensley, you want it? <laughs> You're just like your mama. There you go. Thank you. You can hop right on the trail behind this and just keep going to Virgin Falls if you want to. But we've taken a straw poll this morning and um, <laughs> our crew's ready to go back. So we figured, we did it pretty good. So we're gonna start heading back to the truck this morning. Something that I didn't realize until recently was, wow, if, if we weren't doing this lifestyle and 
Hensley was in third grade and JJ was in pre-K or because they're five years apart, they would never see each other really all day until pretty much after school dinner time they'd eat dinner go to bed that's really hard for kids to bond when they're not getting that interaction and they're just apart all day long and you know there is a boy and a girl in five years and so i thought will they be close will they have stuff to bond over but our children look at that they play together all day and they are just so close and that just warms my heart. Do you guys love each other? Uh -huh. We're playing a game. Are you playing a game? Uh -huh. Is Hensley your best friend? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, everybody have fun camping? Yes. Uh -huh. Would you do it again, Hensley? Yes, I would do it again. You would do it again? <laughs> JJ, oh. would you go camping again? Uh -huh. What about you, Nathan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. So Marissa and I have been reading a book by Andy and Sandra Stanley called uh, Parenting, Get It Right, which is actually a very intimidating title. I don't know if I'm a fan of it, but, <laughs> but I like the book because it talks more about relationships over just most of your parenting books are just straight discipline. Reward good behavior, take away something for bad behavior. You know, and I'm a fan of discipline, which is teaching and correcting and learning through mistakes and all that. But one of the main points in the whole book is like, what is your win as a father or as a parent or as a dad or a daddy? And he defines the win in this book as your kids are still, still want to be around you, still miss you, and still want to spend time with you in their adult years, even though they don't have to. And not just the kids living with you forever, that's not what he's saying, not codependence, but like them being independent, but yet still wanting that relationship. And sort of a sub win of that is they also feel the same way about their siblings. So they also miss them and want to spend time with them as an adult, even though they don't have to. For us, I've thought a whole lot about that. How do we parent? coach and spend time with our kids in a way that we get that win later on in life because it doesn't matter if my kid is perfectly behaved but he <laughs> doesn't want to be around me later on it doesn't matter if my kid gets everything they want but they're so spoiled they just don't want to be around me later on in life um, and, I, and I also want Hensley and JJ to you know like they currently do right now we want to keep figure out how to how do I keep doing that as time goes on we want you and JJ to be friends for life. You think you can do that? Mm -hmm. We are looking for the next clue. To help us find the truck. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> wow. Is that even an actual song or did you make that up? I kind of ripped off from Blue's Clues a little bit. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, there's some of that there. But yeah, if you're a father, if you're a dad, maybe you got younger kids, maybe you got teenage kids, maybe your kids are adults. They're living and breathing, it's not too late. Um, that's, you, you can come up with your own win. That's the win that Marissa and I have really emphasized when it comes to our relationship with our kids. It's all my help us. Oh no, I was literally just talking about I can't go. my fear of snakes. Li JJ walks up on it and he's talking to it and I'm like, I thought it was a worm, but it was a snake. So this is what dads do for you. Well, stay back so I'll check it out. Where? Oh wow, that thing's tiny. I must have walked right by that. You did, because JJ was like, oh, a I thought it was a worm. Come here, Hensley, look. He's right here. We'll have to get a stick and get him off the trail. Oh, okay. Did Daddy protect us, JJ? He protected us from a snake. Pretty sure it was a copperhead, too. <laughs> Copperheads are known to be out here. Oh. Daddy, did you move it off the trail? Stop the trail. Okay. <sighs> Embracing my fears. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that snake keep me from memories. Just have to be careful where we're walking. Before Nathan and I got married, like, I knew he was gonna be a good dad, but I had no idea how good of a dad he was actually gonna be. He's honestly exceeded my expectations, which says a lot, because I had a high expectation for a father, because I had an amazing father. You know, that was our, our biggest cheerleader. So unfortunately, when I lost my dad, to cancer while Nathan and I were dating. I mean, I really had high expectations and he's just such an amazing dad. Literally gave up his whole life, career, <laughs> you know, to do anything, to spend time with his kids. And he does, he's like always in the floor, playing Legos with them, sleeping on the ground. It's like our kids just adore him and still be a teacher, still be respected by them and but still be their superhero it's just unbelievable to see i'm just so grateful for him 
We're almost there. Don't walk off. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. We got it. Point two miles, JJ to the parking lot. Okay. I think that's why I enjoy hiking as a family so much is we get to push each other, just like builds our teamwork, kind of like makes us push ourselves, be a little bit uncomfortable. Like we want to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And last night was uncomfortable. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable, but it was a bonding experience. We're, they always say the families that camp together stay together. You having fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We made it. We survived. Hello. We're going to bring our Viva and camp in the parking lot next time. <laughs> <laughs> Just say we did it. So happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And let me challenge you whether you have a kid that's three or 43, find something you can do together that helps each of you be comfortable being uncomfortable so you can challenge yourselves. And there's something about challenging yourself that just brings a family together. Well, that's our journey for this week. Hopefully one day, <laughs> JJ will love me more <laughs> than the pine cones on the trees. Until next time, we'll catch you guys later. To the camera, say, Daddy, I love you. Happy Father's Day. Daddy, I want you. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Did you just say Happy Father's Day? <laughs> that's pretty accurate too. Funny. <laughs>